Is it a gun that sucks balls? I'm the farting demon in this relationship. <laughs> I'd be an awesome rich person. You're both just an embarrassment. God, I'm awesome today. We're talking Tom Hanks and his vehicle. Yeah, I had my finger in my mouth waiting for you to finish. You gotta get four balls or something? Like dick piercing? <laughs> no, you know damn well I'm fucking that demon. It's still sexy. How could that be close and not be right? Yeah, I'll just kill some random dude. His wish is a blowjob. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Potty Time, the podcast where we three gamers discuss video game stories in detail with all the necessary and appropriate backlash. On one side of the table, we have Chump Slap. You think you're going to live forever, but you won't. Someone will kill you. Someone will kill you with a knife. And on the other side of the table is Dr. Scientist. Every white person knows a criminal named Derek, an asshole named Kyle, and an uninteresting person named Doug. <laughs> My name is Papa Scotch, and as I always say, somehow we've brought our sins back physically, and they're pissed. <laughs> Welcome to Potty Time. Uh, so this week, obviously, uh, starting with the crevice like we always do, just one little... Little thing we we uh, got incorrect. We, mm-hmm. I think it was we. This was more of a group effort. All right, <laughs> and secondly, I don't like the tone. <laughs> but uh, obviously, we were talking about Half Life last week. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Who could forget? And uh, we misremembered the year that Wolf Creek came out. Wolf Creek came out in two thousand five. We all thought it was sometime in the nineties. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Nineties, two thousand five. What's the difference? Other than that, we're 100% perfect. Good. So let's just go ahead. We'll move right into what you play in, what you watch, what you doing. Dr. Scientist, what are you up to, buddy? Well, I actually did play a game this week. Ooh, breaks oh. the streak. Yeah, but it wasn't Disco Elysium like I wanted to play. <laughs> oh. It was uh, this platforming game called Gris. Yeah, it's just an arty little platformer. Yeah, I've seen that one. It looks good. And of course, I uh, I would recommend it if you get it for cheap and aren't that interested in it's still all right okay and then i watched probably the best season of it's always sunny in philadelphia the 11th season okay take walk us through it because you can't just say that without referencing some episodes yeah. well the first one is charty mcdennis to electric boogaloo <laughs> oh, fuck that is a good one yeah yeah <laughs> which is followed up quickly by frank falls out of window which is one of oh my god that's my favorite yeah, that's one, one of the <laughs> best ones <laughs> <laughs> and then immediately after that one is the gang hits the slopes which oh yeah and then <laughs> d made a smut film mac and dennis moved to the suburbs which might be my favorite always oh, sunny episode being frank is in that one charlie catches a leprechaun well yeah, it's all right you got it except the last two episodes the gang goes to hell part one and part two that's kind of eh. but the rest of the season makes up for it yeah i didn't love the uh gang goes to hell but the other ones yeah solid Absolutely solid. And then I watched some more of the Castlevania, and I stopped because there was a fight between two of my favorite characters, and the loser dies. I was upset. Oh. Just couldn't do it. Couldn't yeah. do it that that moment. Yeah, I got to put it down. Damn. I mean, COVID's been weird for all of us. You don't know how you're going to react to other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just don't know. Well, I, I don't want to ruin it for anybody who didn't see it, but I, I, was, I almost cried. Was it almost the end of the season? I think it's halfway through it. Yeah. Someone told me that this is the last season. I heard that too, and then I heard it might be the last one to do like with the Castlevania three story. Uh, but okay, who Fair. knows? Yeah, I mean it's super popular. I believe my friend, our uh, friend of the podcast, Vinny from Retro Grab Bag Show, had a video about it. Mm, true that. And I watched some bad movies. Uh, how I, bad? Uh, one called Lake Mungo. Well, actually, that one wasn't too bad. I saw that too, and and I it came it kept like showing up on lists of like one of the best underrated horror movies of the last decade. Yeah, that, that's why I watched it because I was running out of things to watch. I just started watching what culture lists. Oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was okay. It was. I thought it was fine. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't a, hate it. It was a little weird, like just how. Well, not if anybody's gonna see it. I want to ruin it, but. Like when she dies, and then people start seeing her around, and then hey, it's just the whole thing is pretty nice. It's all right. It's all right. It's pretty all right. It's it's spooky. It's got some spooky yeah. moments. Yeah, right, maybe I'll check it out. And then if you want to watch a really fucking weird movie, it's not weird. It's uh creepy. It's definitely up Chump Slaps Lane. Ooh, it's called Exhibit A. Ooh. Love the name. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't it's, heard of this. It's a, uh, I believe it's a British movie. But there's this this girl's like filming her family something like family just doing stuff. It's kind of a found footage film, mm-hmm. and the dad starts like slowly going insane because he does, he's losing money and stuff, and he like takes the thing from her and starts recording himself, and he just slowly loses it, kills it was, the whole family. You gotta watch the movie. Yeah, I guess. Interesting. 
But okay. like, yeah, they're they're trying to sell his house, and he starts doing like weird things, like digging a pool in the back, and hmm. and the kids trying to like figure out what he's doing, and it, it's it's pretty good. Right. Well, they say that one's pretty good too. So yeah, that, that, I lied because the next one I talked about was pretty good too, and they were all pretty <laughs> yeah. good. I watched this, it's a sci-fi movie called Spring. It's sort of a sci-fi love story. Yeah, it's pretty good. I liked it. Right. Wait, is this? Did I see this one? Is this the one with the cult? No. Okay, I'm thinking of the guys that made Spring made a newer movie that I'm gonna look up now because it's really gonna bother me, and I'm not doing something for the crevice. But anyway, did you see Spring? It's about I a, did not see Spring. I a, saw their follow up. A guy's like in the United States, and his mom dies, and things start going bad, so he just moves to Italy for the fuck of it. And he meets this girl, and he falls in love, and then it gets like really takes a huge twist after that. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, it's pretty good. <laughs> to take the sci-fi twist? Yeah. Okay, you got me back. <laughs> <laughs> but that was all I did. If Papa Scotch can throw that name of the movie he's talking about to him and then tell us what he did, it'd be great. I really want to. It's here somewhere. Oh, he's just going to edit this part out. That's Maybe. That's his prerogative. Oh, God damn it. It's the way that he wants to live. It's, it's his prerogative. prerogative. You really got to do guys? what he oh, want to do. <laughs> Don't get him wrong. He's really not sus. Uh, okay, I got it. The movie I saw was The Endless. The Endless. The two filmmakers from this, it was their follow-up movie. Is that the one with the, the guys who go in the time thing? And it, the cult? Yes. That was all right, too. I wonder I like if they made more movies. Maybe I'd think they were all right. <laughs> I love how you're not like, I bet I'd love them. You're like, I think they'd, I think they'd be all right, too, if they well, made more. Oh, they're watchable. <laughs> what, going through and not knowing what to watch and trying to find things on Amazon makes me really appreciate the all right movies. See? Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. It's a grab bag if you don't even know where to look. Yeah. Crazy. All right. Well, what did I do? Is that what you asked me? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for video games, I played a little bit of Dutes. Mm, that's different. Something new. <laughs> yeah, they made, a, they made a bunch of changes to zombies now, so shit's different. They added the Easter egg, which I barely researched, but it looks... Overly complicated and silly. <laughs> As a weapon or like an Easter egg Easter egg? It's like a n- different way to finish the 900 levels. Mission. Yeah. Yeah, because it's just like it's round based and you just go round to round over and over until you get to the end, I guess, or die. And this is like a thing, another story related thing you can do just for fun if you want. But it's very, it's very ridiculous. So, but uh, other than that, I played a little bit more. I actually got into Resident Evil Village. Nice. The new one? Yeah, the newest one. Okay. Uh, so far, it feels a lot like Seven. Looks a lot like Seven. Yeah, it's very different. Well, it also stars the same guy from Seven. But uh, if it's, I'm, I don't want to cash. I don't want to be too harsh yet, because I just, I, I'm still in the first castle. Like I barely got anywhere. But uh, I'm not loving it nearly as much as I love Seven. That's for sure. Oh, you heard it here, folks. It yeah, sucks. it sucks. <laughs> well, Papa easy, Scotch easy. says it blows. <laughs> Nothing new. <laughs> Pass. Pass. <laughs> you added a lot of words. That's what I just said. But, you know, is what it is. And, uh, but for watching stuff, uh, I finally, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping up with the Papa Scotch, Papa Scotch trend, which is watching movies way after you guys did. Nice. So I watched the remake of Flatliners. Oh. <laughs> it's not nearly as good as the original. It's not. We wanted to watch the original first, but we couldn't find it on any streaming services, and this one was available, so we're like, fuck it, let's jump into it. And uh, it, you also forget, dude, like, the original one, the cast was like... Uh, Star-studded. Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Julia Roberts. Yep. Uh, Billy Baldwin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, God, there's more of them. Yeah, there's not definitely more people that we're, we'd know. if we. Who's do- in the new one? Elliot Page. That might be it that I remember. Uh, and the dude. From Hey Dude. The dude from Hey Dude. The titular character <laughs> from Hey Dude. <laughs> no, he was the guy that played the abusive husband in that new movie that was on Netflix, Things Seen, Not Heard, or whatever oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Never saw it. Okay. Then fuck it. Yeah, I'll move on. It. So I also watched two grandparents going crazy movies. I thought he was going to stop before he said movies. <laughs> That would have been sweet. They were fighting <laughs> in the street over a dead possum. It was weird. But uh, no, we watched The Visit, which is the M. Night Shyamalan one with the two kids that go to visit their grandparents. Mm, so it sucked. Wait, what happens? Well, there's like a huge spoiler in it. A huge twist. Go figure. A huge twist in an M. Night Shyamalan movie. 
The visit? How old is it? Oh, 2015? 2017? Hmm. Nah, it's maybe 2013? I'm just going to Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Sometime between something? 2010 and now is when it came out. We're at now now. Is there another? There's got to be another movie called The Visit that I watched. I would imagine there's yeah. probably like a sci-fi movie named The Visit and then a horror movie named The Visit. It's the M. Night Shyamalan one. It's, it's from 2015. It's about two siblings who... Uh, ra- being raised by a single mother, played by the lovely Catherine Hahn, who's always great. Mm-hmm. Don't know who that is. <laughs> she, it's the the evil lady from Wandavision. Oh, okay. Basically, she's estranged from her parents. She hasn't seen them in in decades because she hates them. And they reached out and said, "Hey, we want to like get to meet our grandkids. We're ready to make amends." So she just sends them to the grandkids, and they spend like a week there. Okay. She sends them to the grandparents, not the grandkids. Yeah. <laughs> She sends the grandparents to the grandkids. Yeah. <laughs> sends the grandkids to the grandparents in some random made up rural Pennsylvania town and shit goes down. Sounds like a rural Pennsylvania mm. town. Go PA. There's more in movies named The Visitor than The Visitor. Uh, other than that, we also watched, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this one, but The Taking of Deborah Logan. Is that a porn? No. Not ex- well, to somebody, That's the probably. Of Deborah Ro- oh, <laughs> oh, okay. But uh, it was about a woman. An old woman who was going through like really, really bad Alzheimer's dementia, probably dementia. And so this camera crew is like following her around, like document the whole process and see how rough it is to make like an artistic movie. It's kind of exploitive, but it's all a narrative. It's all, you know, fake. And then it turns out that she's not, she doesn't have dementia. She's possessed. Oh, makes sense. Mm. I always think that when I see old people. Yeah. Yeah, possessed by some kind of snake demon man. Sexy. That is that is hot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was okay. I, I didn't love it. I thought it could have been a little bit better. There was way too much, like, setup where they try to trick you. Like, is this her being weird because yeah. she has dementia or is this because she's possessed? Meanwhile, all the, like, marketing material for the movie is like, she's clearly possessed. Mm. So, you know. Oh, that kind of it. ruined it, huh? Yeah. Yeah, like, it, it was just, like, it took the movie 45 minutes to get to, like, the, part paint the picture did. in your head that, yeah, that there's a twist. And we, like, already came in knowing that. <laughs> so, I mean, whatever. It was fine. But that's really, that's all I'm, and that's what I'm ending my week with, a big wet fart. What about you, <laughs> Sir Chump Slap? Sexy. I had a couple <laughs> of big wet farts this week, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell us about them in detail. I played a little dudes, you know, some multiplayer, some zombies. Word? I don't know. With any other members of the podcast? Yeah, I played a little bit mm. on a school night, so oh. I had to cut it close. Whoa. What'd you stay up till 10? 10? 10.30, dude. <laughs> Whoa. Wild man over here. I know. I told people at work, I was like, I went to bed at 11 o'clock. They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I've been playing. Uh, yeah, nothing else really tickles my fancy right now okay or for the past 12 weeks or however long it's been but we'll get into some some movies that i saw okay mm. hit us up let's, let's do uh, it first there's this television show on amazon called invincible you guys hear about this you read about this See heard this? about it it was recommended by one sam p shout out Ooh. sam shout out sam p it's about a kid who's the son of a superhero, like the strongest superhero in the world. And he's just getting his powers. And there's like a league of superheroes, yada, yada. So like the boys? It's kind of like the boys. Because like the first okay. episode, I'm like, what is this fucking, some kid getting his superpowers? What the fuck? I don't want to watch some high school drama shit. Right. And then it ends with a crazy cliffhanger. And you're like, what the fuck? Now I have to keep watching it. Like the Sylvester Stallone movie? Yes, exactly. <laughs> nice. And when you were talking about it, it sounded just like Rambo 3. <laughs> I was thinking Cliffhanger. but Yeah, so I, I watched all eight episodes back to back to back. It was, It's pretty good. It's kind of like The Boys. It's in that vein, like superheroes and just weird shit. But I don't know. Give it a go. I gave it a thumbs up. Is it new? Did it just come out? Yeah, it it was weekly, but I think they're all out now, all eight episodes. So, gotcha. You don't have to worry about it. 
Okay. Whew. All right. All right. And I watched this movie called In the Earth. Mm. You guys hear about this one? You see this one? Sounds sexy. No, have not. It's uh, there's like this crazy virus, you know, COVID, and there's a scientist and a scout. They're just going out in the woods to do some like research. Sure. The scientist is researching like the, you know, that network of roots and moss, and they say like the forest all communicates yeah. with, with that. They're, he's doing that research shit. There's an X Files episode about it. Yeah. Cool. So he goes out in the woods, and they run into some crazy people who think they tapped in and could talk to it and yada yada mm, so hippies crazy shit happens no there's yeah. like scientists and... oh it's yeah, i don't know it's pretty fun okay. which movie in the earth mm. i think in it's brand new earth. i think it just came out 2021 okay okay but yeah give that a look i watched uh builders of ancient mysteries <laughs> is that a documentary <laughs> yeah it's good it's but it's i think it was like Crown fu- crowdfunded type of thing. This person just goes around looking at like all these ancient civilization sites and how they're all similar and like there's crazy intricate patterns on underneath what other civilizations put on top and shit. And they don't draw any conclusions or nothing. There's not like aliens or shit like that, but it's just shows a bunch of crazy shit. And you're like, wow, how do these people do this 12,000 years ago? Interesting. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It's on Amazon. Give it a look. Okay. So it's it's an official slump slump chap. It's an official <laughs> chump slap recommendation. Yeah. That's it's not saying. slappy at all because it's like real. So <laughs> Right. Sure, sure. Of course. <laughs> but I watched Simon Says. Now, this was slappy. This is a Crispin <laughs> Glover vehicle. Sweet. <laughs> he plays killer twins. Oh, so he's in there twice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And it's just like a cabin in the woods type. Kids go into the woods camping. He comes around, kills them. Nothing really special about it, but, you know, scratch that Crispin Glover itch after watching Back to the Future 2 the other day. (laughs) Sure, of course. Of course. But uh, that's about all I watched except for the Slapper of the Week. Fried Barry. Mm. Fried Barry. It's about a guy named Barry. Yep, nailed it. Who works at a fast food restaurant Mm -hmm. and uh, ends up seeing the mob kill somebody and has to go into witness protection. I like it. I like it. That's my guess. I'm going to say it's about a self-employed electrician named Barry (laughs) who accidentally electrocutes himself, and the whole story is kind of like what dreams may come where he's in heaven the entire time going over his life. Well, spoiler alert. Oh, I thought you were going to go with, like, shocker, where he just can't kill people. (laughs) That's kind of where I thought he was going with it, too. (laughs) Too easy. Too easy. No, you're both wrong. But it's about a guy named Barry, and he's a heroin addict, alcoholic. Mm, and one okay. day, he's just walking, and aliens beam him up and take over his body. And it's just why'd they beat him up? Beam him. Up. Oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, if they're taking his body, why did they beat him up? They and just come just... down, beat the shit out of him, <laughs> take his body. Yeah, it's just about like one night. Where it's just an alien, like, piloting his body, and he just goes around. He has sex with a sex worker, and she conceives and bears a child in 30 seconds right afterwards. <laughs> Whoa. That's how I hear it's done. Yeah. And, and it's just weird shit, because the whole time he's, like, not talking, because it's an alien, and the alien doesn't know. So is it, like, in her skin, or whatever the one is with uh, Scarlett Johansson? Under the skin? Under the skin, Under that's the skin, it. Where she's not in control of her body. Uh, I guess she's like an alien, though. Kind of alien. Yeah, well, it's kind of, but they just zap him back at the end. You know, he's like, he just comes back. Mm, and they leave him as a dad. That's the worst. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, but the alien grows up to be his exact age by the end of the movie. And you're like, what the fuck? Wow, at least he can <laughs> take care of himself. Well, not his age, but like it looks like him. But it's Man, only like a day old. And he wasn't potty trained. It's, it's weird, because the guy's a scumbag, and... People hate him. 
And now there's two of them. Yeah. It's it was very sloppy, but I won't say it was great or good even. <laughs> <laughs> but well, it's it is a slapper of the week. The it's not the, of the week. Yeah. It's not the good movie of the week. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's the slapper. So that again, the slapper of the week is Fried Barry. So let's go ahead. Move into our favorite segment of every week, video game news slash stuff. <laughs> it sounds like it's an answering machine now. <laughs> <laughs> Leave your number. We should do a clean one and put it on the uh, Spotify. You can use that as your answering machine or your voicemail. Hey, I guess. Who the fuck has an answering, answering machine? machine. <laughs> yeah, I, it took a second before I corrected myself, but yes. So, any hoodles, video game news slash stuff. This week, big deal, guys, in the Overwatch community. Oh, no cap? No cap indeed. <laughs> it, <laughs> it turns out that Overwatch 2 is going to go down to five on five for PvP matches. Oh, Instead shit. Instead of the current eight on the eight? The current is 6v6. <laughs> oh. Wow, that's big news. So yeah. the tank role is going to be bumped down one spot per team, where teams in current Overwatch, at least in role-defined queues, are two tanks, two DPS, and two supports. Now there will be only one tank apiece. Oh, that could work. Oh, I see that. I don't know exactly how Overwatch is played, but I can see that working still. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, apparently people who play Overwatch, they care a lot about it. Yeah, because if you're a tank, you're like, Jesus, yeah, that's Especially half if you've been playing with the same five other people, now you have to get rid of one. Pick your least uh, favorite friend and not play with them. <laughs> yeah, right. And then everyone's going to know that they're their least favorite yeah. friend <laughs> of the group. No, it's only because you were the tank and you were shittier than this guy. <laughs> yeah, if you would have picked support in the beginning, you knew you wanted to be a tank. This is your fault. <laughs> exactly. It's the no homers club. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The no tanks club. Oh, yeah. You're allowed to have a tank. But uh, other than that, we also got some news from Little Big Planet. Oh, oh well, yeah. They just released that game for PlayStation Five, Sackboy Adventures. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sackboy, a big adventure. Sorry. And uh, it turns out they had to shut down the multiplayer servers because uh, there was an attack on its loyal communities and members. They didn't say specifically what the messages were, but apparently they were flooded with offensive messages. Mm. Oh no, the internet wouldn't do something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I never saw that coming. Yeah, so they had to shut it all down until, I, got, I don't know, I guess they fix it. Put a filter in it. Ban the people that were, I don't know, saying horrible things. But I guess that's big news. To It, it must suck to be playing a multiplayer game, and then the next day you try to log in, it doesn't work, and it's because someone said duty stink too many times. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what people mean by offensive anymore. I'm pretty sure it's Whoa. not that. I hope you edit that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was that too much? that go too far? You've edited out less. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have. <laughs> A duty stink. <laughs> oh, he said it again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. But uh, that's all I really have for actual news. But I do have one single piece of bullshit speculation if you guys want to hear it. Nice. Yes. <laughs> all right. Sweet. I love the enthusiasm. <laughs> so apparently the rumor is Square Enix is supposedly working on a Final Fantasy spinoff game with Team Ninja. Wow. Another Final Fantasy game? Penultimate Believe it or not, fantasy. so the the small pieces of information that have been supposedly leaked by a renowned this, the the source I guess I should do that first is a renowned leaker from France. Ooh, I know him. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they did successfully and accurately leak the Ghost of Shimura DLC. Tsushima. Tsushima. Yes. Oh man, this is not a said. great start for the game we're doing today. <laughs> 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 The lose the translation of what he said is it might possibly be called Final Fantasy Origin or Origins. I'm pretty sure there already is a Final Fantasy Origin. So, anyway, maybe I'm maybe I'm mixing it up with something else. Maybe. The interesting thing though is it's supposed to be Souls like, and uh, Jedi Jedi Fallen Order was also mentioned as a comparison point. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, they're I'm dumping listening. a demo this summer on the PSN to gather some feedback, and from what they understood. It's going to be PS5 only. Booyah, yeah, take that, PS4 heads. Yeah, Still have jerks. no reason to buy a PS5. <laughs> Although Ratchet and Clank's uh, coming out soon. You got, you got a month or two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> when, well, who knows how time works? 
Do we ever say that uh, Mahershala Ali is going to be Blade in the new Marvel Universe movie? No. That's coming out in a couple years? <laughs> I don't know if we ever reported that. I, I did see the news, but we did not report it. No. I, I wasn't sure if you said it, and I saw it, and I was like, eh, maybe we'll mention that. A new Blade? Yeah. Like reboot? I guess he's just added to the Marvel Universe as something. Uh, Part of Phase 4. Oh, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Mahershala Ali is always pretty good. I don't know who that is. He's amazing. He's the uh, guy from... Uh, I'll take your word for it. 4800 is, or 4400 is what I remember most from, but Never he's in a it. lot of things. He was uh, the newest season of True Detective. The main guy? Yeah. I like that. That guy was good. <laughs> All right. He's been in a billion other things that yeah. we can't remember right now, but uh, he's always fantastic. But that'll do it uh, for Video Game News Slash Stuff. <laughs> So how about we get into the game? How does that sound? Let's fucking do this, man. Mm. This easy to understand paint by numbers narrative here. Yeah, exactly. There's I'm sure nothing was lost in the translation <laughs> whatsoever. But this week we're talking about a game where we are going to answer the question, can a pair of siblings close a hellgate armed only with a camera? Huh? That's right. We're talking about Fatal Frame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was released December 13th, 2001, which is, oof. Ooh, that's two months, man. Two months. Too so soon. We were st- still healing. <laughs> we still are in many respects. In are a you, lot of ways. Are you saying it yeah. didn't change everything? <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> so the number one song on December 13th, 2001 was the banger You Got It Bad by Usher. Another one I don't know. <laughs> Unsurprisingly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number one movie is Ocean's Eleven. Oh, never saw it. the original. The OG one. You never Not saw the, the original OG. one? No. Not the OG OG, you're <laughs> yeah. right. I have no desire to see any movie, heist movie. Oh, we got a heist ah. hater. Ooh, get out. <laughs> and then uh, a gallon of milk costs $2.89. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, now the average is $3.58. Yeah. yeah. I go by 2% price. That's all I know. Straight up moo juice. Damn. It was released for PlayStation 2 and Xbox, developed by, here's a blast from the past, Tecmo, and Ooh. published by Tecmo. Oh, the Super Bowl makers? Mm-hmm. The one and the same. <laughs> it's a single-player survival horror photography game, <laughs> and I could not find a single credited writer for this, but I'm sure someone did it. Yeah, I would have taken credit for it. <laughs> so Chump Slap wrote Fatal <laughs> Frame. Yeah. Good job, Chump Slap. No problem. So I picked this one this week because it kept coming up on lists of the best horror games ever existing. Mm -hmm. And I remember hearing about it. I don't know if I remember hearing about the original one, but I definitely remember when like three and four came out. Yeah, there's like six now, isn't there? There's a lot, at least five. Man, I don't want to look up stuff for the crevice. Let's say at least five is good. Yeah, I know there's at least five. Those qualifiers. Yeah. There's like at least five main ones. There's a whole bunch of like spinoffs and mobile ones and all kinds of shit. Well, you're correct. They were saying at least five then. Okay. According Perfect. to uh, Wikipedia, there is seven. Yes. Like six. <laughs> I guess some of them might be spinoffs, but. That's at least five, right? Yeah. yeah man. We are fucking nailing it. I know, right? You could get rid of that whole talk. <laughs> We can't be incorrect if we te- keep talking in just bullshit generalities, right? Yeah. yeah. I picked it this week, so how, how, should I just jump into this? Yes. This? Yeah. Let's let's get throw some backstory at us. Whoa, there's a lot of backstory. I kind of went through this because if we're just talking about the action that happened in the game, if you ignore all the journal entries and the research papers and the the notes to you from your brother, there's not much story here at all. No. no. It's more about the horror part of it, I guess. It's all summed up in like 30 seconds at the end of the the game, too. Yeah, exactly. So if you missed all that other extra stuff, I I guess it's extra stuff. It's apparently extremely important plot points that (laughs) explain the whole fucking story. But So I'm going to try to go through this in the timeline of the game you're playing, and I'm going to try to explain and reveal the things as we kind of go through them. Glad you had to do it. Yeah, I know. This one's <laughs> it's it's a lot. Let's just let's just roll right into it. We start September twenty fourth, nineteen eighty six, at the Humero Mansion. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, basically, there's uh, two siblings. They're our main our main group here. Basically, the story is Bafuyu goes to the Himuro Mansion to find his friend uh, slash mentor, who's a novelist, Jensei Takamine. Now, at the time, Takamine was researching a book at the mansion uh, about another missing person, and it was a folklorist named Ryoso Mukanada who disappeared, like, we're talking 100 years ago, like generations ago. Seems to be a lot of people going missing. Yeah, that's why it's so interesting. Takamine is, refer- is researching a book about Murakata, who disappeared in this mansion, and then he disappeared, and then Mafuyu's like, well, I owe it to him. I got to go at least try to figure out where the fuck this guy is. There's no way I'm going to disappear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Where are the odds three people disappear? <laughs> <laughs> three in a row? Come on. <laughs> so uh, Mafuyu goes... He, he looks for Takamine. He doesn't come back. No one. We don't know exactly how much time passed. I think it's supposed to be like a week or two. And then you actually start playing. That you, you, you have this intro sequence with Mafuyu. But then Miku, Mafuyu's sister, gets worried and goes after him to the house. Yeah, he's gone two weeks before she goes. Is it two weeks? Okay. Yeah. I couldn't find a definite timeline, but I thought it was, it was not long. And the... Uh, so basically, Mafuyu, Miku, are they identical twins? They're not like. Are they for, twins? That's what I'm wondering. I thought they were just brother and sister because he looks a lot older. Yeah, I just thought they were brother and sister, but. Okay, well, either way, they're brother and sister, and their mother. We, Check we it just for the keep, crevice. <laughs> Check. Note for the crevice. So their uh, mother killed herself when they were very young, so they kind of just basically had each other. They, they've got pretty tight by that. Yeah. They don't tell you that she killed herself until pretty late in the story, <laughs> way later. Way later. Uh, so you start playing as Mafuyu in a black and white sequence. This whole intro is basically played in... It's not basically. It is played in black and white. And all you really have as Mafuyu is you have a flashlight and you have a camera that they call the Oculus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is all just... It's a tutorial, Mitchell, that shows you how to use the camera to capture ghosts. And both the brother and sister have... A sixth sense that they can sense ghosts around. Do they capture the ghosts or do they kill the I ghosts? I assume. Well, you're when that little the soul particles go into your camera, you're collecting their souls. Yeah, you do. Gain so, souls. so it's like a Ghostbusters thing. Yeah, I thought that's how I took it. Okay, or they just get put on the film. It does steal your soul. Yeah, that's why. Like the Native Americans believed. Yes. Whoa. That's how I wrote all of my notes that the souls were taken. Okay. Yeah. Because if you think about it, y- these ghosts are just angry spirits that are uh, at are unrest. I know what a ghost is. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> if you think of them as the victims, which you probably should, then Miku's killing a lot of people. She's just taking souls. She's mm-hmm. a soul eater. Yeah. End of the day. There you go. Fun perspective. Any hoodles. So you're going through. You're, you're doing the tutorial. You find Takamine's notebook. And uh, Mafuyu has the six, he uses that sixth sense of his. A vision comes to him, and he sees Takamine showing up with his entourage and getting stalked by ghosts. His entourage is the editor and his publisher, Koji Agata. It's funny that they didn't notice that those other people were missing, too. That is a good point, because he just went to find Takamine. Yeah. Well, maybe he didn't know. He took a whole crew with him. But nobody else cared to look? Maybe they did, and they disappeared. Oh, maybe. No, the cops are... St- Cops don't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. So he's joined with his assistants, Koji Agata, well, his editor at, at the publisher, and then Tomoe Hirosaka, who also had sort of a sixth sense feeling that she didn't want to go, but working with Takamine apparently was too good to pass up. So there's we go back to the real life flashback, black and white time with Mafuyu. There's an intense headshot, and then it fades to white. <gasps> oh. My God. And that is the end of our intro sequence. So it's it's split up in nights, I guess they call them. Yeah. Chapters, supposedly. Sex acts at play acts. Anyway, so the first one is called the strangling ritual. Sounds sexy. Right? It's the first it night. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Miku arriving at the mansion two weeks later. She got a note from Mafuyu saying that he went there, so she went to go find him. You know, he's missing. He's not coming back. So she sees a vision about these these ropes. She keeps hearing ghosts say ropes. There's a lot of going on with ropes. Mm-hmm. So we find the camera as our, you know, our main weapon and source of stopping these ghosts, and you get a vision of Mafuyu being there. Yeah. And is she wearing tap shoes? Because she was 
fucking loud as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I have it's no just an recourse old house. but but to believe she did. Yeah. It was ridiculous. It's every, now canon. Every step you take, it sounded like tap shoes. What shouldn't you take the shoes off before you enter the house? Oh. Isn't that a that's a big thing? Not in old rundown houses with I guess if it's abandoned, yeah. you know, you got you got watch for some is snag nails. It's there. more than like just a house though, right? It's like a mansion. Or is it, no, it's just a big house, right? I thought it was like a temple kind of thing, but there's temples in the backyard, I think. Mm. Oh, it's a whole complex. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a large mansion. It's it's with like two or three multiple buildings. Because in the movie, in the video we watched, you keep going back to the same places. Yeah, it's kind of like Resident Evil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, just like with it. a camera, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and fewer zombies. Yeah, but uh, you you fuck around chasing ghosts, t- stealing souls until mm-hmm. you find Did the ghosts. Find out. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> You find a ghost child in a white kimono who points you to a direction of a wall. You take a picture. You see behind a folding screen, and you find a door. And this is the first of many ghost white kimono ghost child visits yeah. that kind of helps you out on your journey. So the camera kills ghosts, reveals them, and also reveals secrets. Or It's a hell of a camera. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. You can't just get that anywhere, right? Like, you got to get someone to make that. Probably a shaman or a wizard. Someone or, yeah, someone who believes in strangling rituals. A soothsayer? I don't know. I Well, Dr. Scientist will tell, tell us off air. We don't wanna, <laughs> we don't want to blast Got it. it. So you see a door behind the folding screen. You head on through. You find a tape recorder. You get a vision of the assistant, uh, the editor, hiding in a closet, and he gets got. Mm-hmm. Mm, the best kind of getting. <laughs> <laughs> when the getting's good. No, all right, fine. Don't, <laughs> don't fucking react to my witty banter. Whatever. I, I didn't think I it was that sh- witty, but. Right. Well, you could have added, you know, we're building something here. Is this before or after you find the tape recorder? Did you just, you uh, just find it? Yeah. Okay. Like, this is the first time you find it. I just want to say, seems like a waste of tapes. It's like 20 seconds yeah. of audio. And I then- see what you're saying, yeah. But uh, did she listen to the whole like I don't know how long those went for forty five minutes I don't know yeah it could be it the only and it was perfectly queued up to that section too you know yeah well, there's got to be a reason suspension of disbelief I guess uh, yes so you end up fighting the ghost of the uh, editor and he's saying rope a lot and then you steal his soul with your camera the reason he was saying rope a lot is because he was stricken with the rope curse. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a thing? I, I think he just made that up. I don't remember reading that. <laughs> <laughs> what is the rope curse, you ask? Yeah, I did. <laughs> so the curse is afflicted on a person when they come in contact with the main, vi- I guess with for lack of a better word, kimono. main villain ghost. The white kimono lady? Yes, the white kimono lady. Kiri. Is it Kiri? Kiri, yeah. Kiri. Uh, the first system, it, the first system, the first <laughs> symptom is that you get rope marks on your wrists and ankles. If I had a nickel. Oh, my God. Rope burn from Mirror's Edge. Perfect. <laughs> and then you start to see shit. That's the second set. There's there's a, a very, very quick escalation here. A couple rope marks, hallucinations. And then you're either hallucinating or you're, six, you're getting some sixth sense, whatever. You're seeing stuff. And then with Koji, the, the guy we're talking about, the ghost that she was going after, the, the rope man. marks were actually seen in a photograph of him that was taken after he came in contact with Kiri, but before he died. Mm -hmm. The last symptom is that there's a rope mark around the neck, which means that you're going to be dead soon. Mm -hmm. Mm. Then the victim gets stretched out from the rope mark spots and basically dies. Not basically, does die. It's like being quartered, drawn and quartered. Exactly. I couldn't think of the goddamn term. Or being part of the strangling ritual. You continue Mm -hmm. on. Roaming the halls. You see him before you, and you see him, like, in the distance, and you call to him, but he doesn't react. He doesn't hear you. He doesn't do anything. It's kind of like he's, like, a ghost almost floating through the area. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, it's, instead of it actually being him, some long arms creepy ghost comes and says, give back, and then you steal their soul. <laughs> a lot of soul stealing. Yeah. Uh, you, you get a bunch of notebooks, and a bunch of information gets dumped on you, but the basic gist is that the b- fucking spoilers. 
things are happening to the people who visit the house. No. <laughs> yeah, that look like the rumors of the old rituals. Whoa. <gasps> right? My. And we're going to, oh, buddy, are we going to get into them? This is a multi step ritual. This is an advanced class. So you find a big, I, lack of a better word, mill wheel, like one of the, uh, what are those things called? Where the water comes and turns the thing? Water wheel. Water wheel. I think it's just water wheel. Is it a water wheel? That yeah. right. We'll go with it. You get a flashback of Tomi Hirosuka with rope birds on her neck. Uh, she gets attacked by another ghost that we're going to see a lot of. I refer to them as the Hansy ghost. Mm-hmm. Sounds sexy. The one that's like a floating person with a bunch of hands coming out from its back. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Why? What did you call it? I didn't call it anything. It's okay. A, it's a ghost. It's a spider boss ghost. <laughs> spider boss ghost. Perfect. Yeah. Need that bingo board spot. Yeah. And then uh, they get killed right in front of Takamine. A child ghost attacks you, and then you take its soul. There's a couple children ghosts, and you just yeah, it's a whole lot eat of their ghosts. souls. The sexiest. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, they make more connections about rope burns and the presences of people. But Miku heads outside, steals the soul of a laundering, wa- la- a wandering, lost wow. businesswoman. You should have done some vocal exercises first. <laughs> Unique New York. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, a lot of tongue twisters in this one. I haven't even been drinking. I got to get it together, huh? Yeah, All right. Have a couple sips. There you go. So... She keeps saying and repeating the phrase, the mirror, the mirror. She's referring to the holy mirror. Mm-hmm. What is the holy mirror, you ask? Tell us. Dinner. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you better get on board. <laughs> a lot where yeah, I got to explain gotcha, shit gotcha. that Go comes on. up. So basically, there were five mirrors, five different mirrors for five different shrines. They were all destroyed in an earthquake way before Miku arrived. Like, we're talking years, not like a couple years, not centuries. But uh, there was only one remaining mirror, which was the holy mirror. And this was used during the strangling ritual to stop the calamity. Mm -hmm. But when the malice escaped after the failed ritual, the mirror broke into five pieces in the mansion. What's the malice? Oh, I'm going to get to all this. Don't you worry. (laughs) Is all, those words don't mean anything now. They'll make sense. All right. But the thing you should grab from this is that the goal of Miku is to stop the ghosts by finding the five pieces of the mirror to cleanse Kiri's spirit of the malice. Kind of sucks that you're going to find your brother and then you have to fucking do this ghost bullshit. Well, or else you're going to get lost there, I guess. <laughs> I love how you refer to it as ghost bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's also a lot of puzzles in this game. This is one where you get into a puzzle in the Shrine Hut. Uh, from everything I heard and read, the puzzles were pretty silly and easy and mm-hmm. they didn't or look tough just in the irritating speed and didn't yeah. tell you how to fix them. Oh, is this the them? shrine where you see the crucified man on the ceiling? No, that comes up in a little bit. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm completely wrong. This is exactly where you see the crucified man. <laughs> it's, my, it's my goddamn next note. I thought I was following this along perfectly. You were, okay. you were, yeah, my mistake. You're crushing it. That is actually Takamine. The crucified. Oh, okay. Turns out the Hansi ghost got to him too after he tried to close the gate. Mm. So he tried basically to close the Shinto gate with the Buddha statues, which you find. You do a puzzle. You move on. You you get your first piece of the holy mirror. Now you get another vision of creepy children and what I refer to as the kimono child. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're just doing a whole bunch of weird ritual shit, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And this turns out to be the strangling ritual. Mm. So then Miku wakes up from this vision with ghost rope burns on her wrists. And you know what that means. If I had a nickel. Night two. Well, no, it means she's got the rope burns. <laughs> <laughs> so this is as good as time as any to explain what the fuck is the strangling ritual. Uh, Tell us. It's a, way, <laughs> it's a way to stop the gates of hell from opening. Pretty much. Yeah, but there's so much more to it. (laughs) So Kiri was the rope shrine maiden Mm -hmm. chosen by the demon tag ritual at the age of seven, which don't worry, we'll get into the demon tag ritual too. Oh, that's (laughs) nice too. But in order to survive or get through complete, I guess, the strangling ritual, 
She was put in isolation for 3,669 days, which, if you're doing the math, is just over 10 years. Is, is this, was she put in the, the moon well? That's part of the actual ritual. Uh, we didn't even get to that. We're just oh, leading okay. up to this the ritual. This is still a demon tag ritual. I got gotcha. you. This is the strangling ritual that leads to the rope. Rich, there's, there's steps, guys. So <laughs> in these 10 years where she's in isolation, she's only visited by four priests who are all in the Hamura family. The priest of ghosts past and peace of gross future. Yes. <laughs> I wish that's – that'd be a crazy Charles Dickens <laughs> redo. But uh, be, as per the ritual, it has to be family members. They're the only people that are allowed to see her, and they all wore different masks to keep her detached. Because the whole point of this ritual is that you need to put someone through the strangling ritual that has no will to live. She wants that to wants be part to of die. It, yeah. Yes. And if she didn't want to die, the ritual is not going to work. Mm-hmm. So now we're at the fun part. During the ritual, she must go down to the well and be bathed at the bottom of the well in moonlight. Mm-hmm. Purifier. Exactly. There's a, a secret tunnel that is only for the shrine maiden's use. She, everyone has to go through the demon mouth, mm-hmm. which I guess is a different entrance that looks a lot like a cave. And then during the ritual, the rope shrine maiden, which that is, say that three times fucking fast. The mm-hmm. rope shrine maiden is tied to five pedestals. Uh, the limbs are all handled by the four priests. The head is by the Himura family master, who we see later as the demon-faced guy. Her dad, right? Yes. Yeah. It turns out to be her dad, yes. And then w- after the, she is pulled apart, they use the blood-soaked ropes to close the gate. If it's successful, the hell gate is sealed. And the malice cannot get out. Those five people were going to pull her apart. Correct. Yeah, I think he just like. Oh, you crank something. A crank a wheel. I was going to say five people probably couldn't do that. Yeah. Oh no no no! They're they're standing at like pedestals with like wooden wheels and cranking yeah. it and uh, like a leverage. Oh, I'd be cranking it too. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> man, my God! So how many times <laughs> do they have to do this? Uh, once every hundred and some years. The last time this was done was December 13th, 1837. Okay, so 150 years. That's about right, yes. That's how math works. So, basically, the last time they tried to do this, it failed, and it it caused the calamity. I was going to say, what's the calamity? Uh, There's so many steps to the calamity. (laughs) That's when the malice gets out. (laughs) The malice gets out and causes the calamity. The calamity either kills everyone around it or drives them completely insane. That's it? Yes. Which, and then they basically, the problem was that the Himura family master, the guy with the demon mask, he went completely insane and then killed anyone who was left alive. Yeah. So the calamity is just like the opening the gates of hell and yeah. letting craziness come out. Yeah, I guess you could say the malice is like the devil or uh, an evil spirit. Like the darkness, I guess, is mm-hmm. the best way. Or the malice. The ma- well, the malice, is, it's a dumb name. And I, either way, that night, 1,347 souls were lost back in 18. Why were there so many people around? That is a lot of fucking people, right? Yeah. Uh, so the ritual failed, like I said, but we never learned until way later why it failed. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, the reason it failed, a young man showed up to the family home, the mansion, and Kiri saw him through an open window she ends up falling in love with this young man, and they, you know, it's a real Romeo and Juliet situation. Uh, the one of the priests. Yeah, I remember in Romeo and Juliet when the gates of hell opened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you didn't see it. If they wouldn't have killed themselves, at the oh, end. it was a metaphor. They wanted to die. Yeah. That's I get it. It's exactly you get it. You get stuff. So, one of the priests tells the master about what's happening. So then they murder this guy and just tell Kiri that he left. Yeah, like, why he, just, he didn't like you. So he, he said, "Fuck you." Could have just kicked him out. How old was she at the time? Like 10, 13? Uh, she must have been. No, she must have like, been in her teens. Yeah. So like closer to the end of the ritual. Like uh, she didn't really buy this. She didn't bl- buy that the guy just left. So one day she saw him in a dream, and he told her what happened. So she she no longer believed the priest. She didn't really believe in what she was doing. So with this disbelief, and her newfound feeling of love, she didn't want to die. So the ritual failed. Mm. Story as old as time. Mm-hmm. Right. And this all, the reason, and this comes up a little bit later, 
but Kiri never kills or harms Mafuyu mm-hmm. because oh. he looked like he like had a resemblance to her previous crush, I guess. Yes. Demon tag, second night. <laughs> Ooh. Man, this is a lot of games. So you you get your you get your shit together. The Kimono <laughs> child takes a piece of the mirror from you. You find a note from Bafuyu saying he's he's going after the curse. This is his mission now. He's got to close the gate. So you encounter a woman with uh, bleeding eyes, which I will get to in the blinding ritual because there's more. There's more rituals. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, you're trying to stop a demon, so yeah, you can't just close the gates of hell with only one ritual. Exactly. There's several. So you uh, basically capture, steal her soul. That's what you do. And then outside now in a well, you find another child ghost. You picked up a photo showing a child falling down the well. You you fuck with a wall moving puzzle artifact business. And then you hear the important part of this, which is the little kid saying she was only playing demon tag. Mm. So, so this was referring to kids basically playing a childhood game like hide and seek, not the actual ritual of demon tag, which is a real thing. Oh. Yeah, yeah, of course. I thought demon tag was just their fun little thing. Now, what's the demon tag ritual? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. I'll get to it in a sec. But anyway, you continue on. You find a note from Bafuyu saying uh, the, the, the hits are the mansion is changing. The ghosts are doing it. They want to pull you into the past, and the ghosts are back because they're restless. Like, this is shit we is there, already Is there know. a reason he leaves notes around? Because he knows his sister's going to come. Oh, for okay. Yeah, they're for Miku. They're for her. I think one of the notes is actually like, I hope you find this. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, they're directly addressed to her. Yeah. And uh, the funny, I love the line after this where she's like, what am I supposed to do with this information? Like, <laughs> I, I I don't know what you want from me for this. But uh, through you get some other research entries that are more of like the the analysis, the data, yeah. the the reason to dump dial, like dump information on you. And this is where you learn about the blinding mask and the blinding ritual yep. that is actually used in the demon tag ritual. <laughs> the blinding mask has two huge spikes you put on a person's face, and it pokes out their fucking eyes. It didn't look fun. No. Definitely looked like it would hurt. Yeah. Whew. So, the blinding ritual. Yeah, I didn't think you needed it. All right, go ahead. <laughs> this is, this, these, the demon tag and blinding ritual are much quicker. The, the blinding ritual is performed to denote a, air quotes, demon. And then the demon is going to be moved on to the leader of the demon tag ritual. But you use the blinding mask to blind the wearer. The blood on the mask is used to weaken and blind the spirits behind the hell gate. And then that creates the blind demon, which is now coming in the demon tag ritual. <laughs> Duh, how did I miss that? <laughs> so now the demon tag ritual... It takes place with all the girls in the Himura family that are seven years, nine months, and 25 days or older. And it's basically played by uh, until all the children, all the girls are caught by the blind demon. The first girl becomes the next blind demon ritual in 10 years. And then the last girl caught is the rope shrine maiden. So if you're better at the game. You're lucky enough to be the one that's ripped apart by oh, fucking ropes. Okay, yeah, I got it. I gotcha. So this then, the demon tag ritual... You know, this picked uh, Kiri 10 years ago, and she's living the life of the rope the rope shrine maiden, and then that eventually leads to the strangling ritual, which I went over. So you got blinding ritual, demon tag, strangling ritual. Mm-hmm. All right, gotcha. Does this have anything to do with the, the mask that the dad's wearing, and there's something about, like, it changes depending on if the person wearing it's evil or not. Yeah, I don't recall if it's part of any specific ritual except for the ceremonial strangling ritual. Oh, okay. But but you're correct. Like it's supposed to be a mask that you put on and it reveals like the inner person beneath all the bullshit. Yeah. And this dude's not a cool dude. <laughs> no. The so. inner person beneath all the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Who they really are at their core. Yeah. All right. And the the master is not a good dude. Oh, and the blind mask is a key. Oh, it is a key to unlock a puzzle, yes. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. Wow. You you take on, you fight the the lady with the bleeding eyes. She drops matches you use in a candle puzzle. You do the candle puzzle. You head to the basement where you find the child kimono ghost again. 
or uh, I'm sorry, this was a different child ghost whose soul you then steal <laughs> and get another piece of the mirror. All right. So now this is where stuff gets complicated. Oh. Oh, Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, right? <laughs> so there's a flashback of Miku as a child. Oh, this is when she's, yeah, okay. Yeah, she's walking through the backyard. She sees her grandmother, Ye. Uh, she, she's walking, she like sees through a crack in one of the open doors that her grandmother's just frantically taking wild pictures all around her. Mm. And later she would hang herself on a tree on the property, which we did stumble upon her later. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, you find out through notes and other bullshit that your great grandmother lived there. That there were also at some point some missing children. Now we're we're supposed to take it as they got taken by ghosts, like obviously. Um, but she was so ashamed because she was responsible for these children that she killed herself hanging from the tree. Oh, uh, I thought she was dri- driven crazy by the camera, or was that your mom? It technically both, actually. But I think uh, the grandmother. Saw the ghost. No one believed her. The ghosts were there. She was responsible for the kids when they were missing. She okay. killed herself. All right. Fair. And then her husband, Ryozo, is the guy in the robes. I, I refer to him as the monk. He had like long red robes, long dark red robes. Mm-hmm. 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 And uh, they're t- the two of them, their daughter is Mikoto, who's your grandmother. All right. Mm-hmm. And then their daughter is Miyuki, who is your mother, who also hung herself in a very similar fashion. Okay. But then either way, you take you take a bunch of pictures of your dead great grandmother and then steal her soul. <laughs> yeah, okay, but they made it look like it was your mom. It was very confusing because a lot of the people looked very they similar. They looked exactly the same. Yeah, they were they were the same character models. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then they just passed it off as oh, they're the same, they look the same, they're the same family. Duh. Duh, dumbass. All right, gotcha. Idiot. Whew. So you find another note. It says that the woman in the kimono is very powerful, but she like let him go for some reason. This is the thing I was talking about where later you find out it's because it looked like her previous lover. Yes. But uh, he believes that if he just appeases her spirit, then the mansion, you know, this whole thing will be over. The gate will be closed, whatever. Mm-hmm. So Miku does a mask puzzle, gets to another area after she found the bo- the blinding mask, and then... A flashback confirms that Miyamoto got taken by the Hanzi spirit. Mm-hmm. Through the door, Miku sees all kind of shit. The child goes. She gets touched by the Hanzi ghost. She blacks out. Boom. So that is the end of day two. So now we're getting into the third and final. No, this no. is the third night. <laughs> <laughs> this the is third the calamity night, night. The calamity. And this is a pretty quick one because yeah, I explained all the shit that already happened. Yeah. So. Miku has a fever dream. It involves a lot of dead bodies and glimpses. It, it turns out that that's the people that were killed by the Calamity in the original ritual. Yes, yeah, where you learn most of the story. Exactly. She awakens in the tunnel in front of a door, but her feet are bound. No, they're not. Those were ghost bindings. Mm-hmm. She runs through what I thought, I guess, are real-life zombies. There's a section of the game where she's running through, dodging I guess. people, yeah. not ghosts. I don't. Yeah. She gets to the kimono woman. Uh, you do a puzzle, choking out a few statues with ghost rope. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you see a murder by the masked demon, and you take his... By a masked, de- masked guy, not the... The demon masked ghost with the sword? Not the main guy, oh. one of the other priests. Okay. And then you... I forget which one, but you, you take his life force. And then <laughs> there's a another piece of research that tells you that there's a trick mechanism in the well... But mm-hmm. they don't know how to open it. So this is when you fight the ritual master. And this is like the first stage of the fight where he keeps screaming, give me back my head. Yes. And basically he runs away. Like you don't, you know, classic boss I fight. thought the guy without his head was the guest that she fell in love with. Ooh, it could have been. Maybe I missed that. Because they show the murder where the demon ghost with the sword stabs him in the chest and it cuts his head off. I mean... And I Stands to reason. That's who it was. It wasn't Mafuyu, and they looked the same, so yeah, it had to be yeah. him. But, uh, oof. <laughs> After another icon puzzle, Miku comes to a room of blood, which is supposed to be where the strangling ritual takes place. Mm-hmm. So now she, the second stage of the boss fight with the ritual master, and then you get another piece of the mirror. Boom. So she has a black and white fever dream, this time climbing up the stairs and into the hands of the Hansy ghost blacks out and now finally 
We're in the final chapter. Kiri. <laughs> final night. Whew, we're almost done, guys. So Miku awakens with a kimono ghost looking at her. She points to a koto on the ground, which, yes, I did have to look up. It is a long traditional Japanese instrument, sort of like a guitar, but it's like six feet long and lays in the ground. Mm -hmm. It's more like a... What are those called? Kotos. Washboard. No, I, don't know, I don't know what they're called, but yeah. It's like a sit lap guitar. I, uh, a steel yeah. guitar? Maybe. Like a... I just know what it is from magic. It's like a harp that you sit on your lap, kind of. Bring. Yeah. Is it a slide guitar they're called? I don't know what they're called. So let's uh, not even speculate. Yeah, we, we're already deep into this. So you find some sheet music. You play it. You get through the door. And then you continue on. You find another mirror piece. So there's a flashback of the romance of Kiri and her lover before. Miku remarks that it must be someone who looks like him, you know, because we've he says that. Wow, it's weird. So she doesn't really, this is where she's saying, like Kiri's saying she doesn't really want to be the rope maiden. And then Miku heads towards the place of the ritual underground, sees a bunch of spirits walking to the ritual led by the demon master. Mm -hmm. And then we come to what probably one of the more important Mafuyu notes, where he said that he saw Miku walking around the place and he called out to her, but she didn't answer. So it's exactly like what happened before when Miku saw Mafuyu and he didn't answer or do anything. So Maf Mafuyu believes that there's some kind of time warp going on in this mansion. It only makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and the big news, the thing that we di didn't know until now, Kiri, during the failed ritual, actually split in two. One part of her is the evil Hansi ghost, and the other part, Representing your innocence before the ritual is the child in the kimono that was actually helping you along the way. She like physically split in two. I think it's supposed to, it's not supposed to be literal. It's supposed to be. Well, I mean, maybe that's why the ritual failed because the the torso wasn't left there, but she split in two. I thought the ritual failed because she didn't want to. Well, die. that that too, but I, I, all right, I, yeah, I, that doesn't make any sense. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not a literal thing. It's supposed to be. I get the, it. The the, uh, it's the curse her, of the her good ritual. side versus her bad side, yes. sort of situation. Yes. But um, so, so Miku finds another note where Mafuyu's talking about the camera and how it was their mother's, and it was handed down by Grandma Makoto. Her mother and their great grandmother was the one who died in the first ritual. The flashback again about the mouse getting out. Anyway, so now we get to the end. Miku finds Mafuyu, but he's wrapped up by the evil Kiri. Mm -hmm. So you fight Evil Kiri, which ends up breaking the camera because it can't hold her evil spirit energy. Mm. She's too strong. Makes sense. But this is where shit is real. You find the last piece of the mirror in the broken camera. Of course you do. That's why it you was had there power. The whole time, guys. <laughs> Jeez. So you use it to... F to uh, you put all the pieces together, and then you use it to free Kiri from the malice, at, which also, you know, frees Mufuyu from Kiri. Mm -hmm. Yep. So once that's done, the two sides of Kiri walk to the gate together. They combine, and basically, she's like, I don't know how to explain. She's like strung up, using all of her power to keep the gate closed. Yeah, she's used as like, yeah, something. Yeah, she connects the ropes on the sides to close the gate. Right. So this is where the three different endings break off mm. so i'm gonna start with the canon ending and this is the one that comes together i get we see these characters AKA again the ending that matters yeah exactly the other ones are kind they're whatever but this is the re important one so the thing behind the door the mouse is still trying to get out the mansion starts collapsing mm. classic classic the evil's in there and this is gonna blow up now but mafuyu decides to stay with kiri he accepts that this is his destiny and there's something that has to do with the duality of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And then there's a there's a a break, a flash. Miku awakens outside and she sees all the souls in little balls of light escaping to the sky. And then since then Miku has stopped seeing things with her sixth sense. Wow, she loses the power. Loses her power, loses her brother. But I guess close the gate of hell? Yep. Yep. 
And that's the that's the ending you get when you do it on normal mode. Yes. And then there's also the Mafuyu ending, which is what you get when you play it on the hard mode. Mm-hmm. And m- for most of it, it's the same thing, except at the end, uh, Mafuyu decides to go with you and escape. So you both escape and you get outside, but he does mention that he feels really bad about leaving Kiri there by herself. Do you lose, lose your power or not ending? I believe so, because the soul still escaped to the sky. Yeah. And then there's the happy ending, which is exactly the same. This was an Xbox exclusive, strangely. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. <laughs> but uh, but uh, Mafuyu and Miku escape just like the Mafuyu ending. He feels bad about leaving Kiri just like the other ending. But then we see a flash of their two spirits, Kiri and her dead lover, coming together. Oh. So, yeah, it's supposed to be the, the, quote, happy ending. Well, if the spirits come together, who's holding the hell gate closed? Great question. Jesus, that's a terrible ending. But that's it, guys. Thank Christ. <laughs> Whew, that was a lot. Yeah. A lot of extra research to put. Th- and apparently when you're playing this game, you uh, you stumble upon the notes and the research and stuff like that. But you may not, if you don't do it correctly, you're not going to get to them in order. So it's going to be uh, even more confusing, yeah. or you can miss ones entirely. Yeah, it was very strange watching the walkthrough. It was. Let's just uh, let's you guys just let's just roll through this. Let's get yeah. Let's just go to the fucking final thoughts, dude. So we're gonna start with the man of the hour, the star of the show, the man who talked the most, Doctor Scientist. <laughs> <laughs> would you play it now? Did the story work for you? And what would you score it there, buddy? Well, there's not a lot worth saying. Would I play it? No. The story worked for me. Uh, it's it's okay. It's not bad. It's just, I won't say typical ghost story, but... Did you understand it all before this? No. <laughs> exactly. I watched it, and then I read the thing, and I was like, I'll just let Papa Scotch explain it yeah. to me. I don't take any offense to that, because that's exactly what the fuck I do when you two are leaving. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't really have that much time this week. I'm not going to try and figure it out. But the story seemed okay. It wasn't anything spectacular. I mean, people just go and disappear. Mm-hmm. And there's a demon door. I mean, it is what it is. I gave it... Uh, was it as good as Clock Tower? Probably. I'll give it seven stars. Seven it is. All right. Well, how about... You? Let's move right into you, Sir Chumpslap. Mm-hmm. Would you play it now? Did the story work for you? What score would you give it there, buddy? Would I play it now? Probably not. I mean, it was, what, PS2? Yep. Even the upgraded graphics and everything, it didn't look that fun to play. I think it was an early PS2 one. Yeah, you said 2001. I mean, I liked the idea of it. Like, oh, your camera stealing souls, that's how you get rid of ghosts, you know? That makes sense. But no, I wouldn't play it. I'd probably play, like, a new updated version. Maybe Fatal Frame 8 or whatever comes out. Did the story work for me? I thought, yeah, the story was, it worked in that, I don't know, if you open the gates of hell, why is everything just isolated in this one building? Yeah, that was building. Yeah. It's like It only kills a couple people and that's it. Yeah, whoever goes into the house. I mean, I thought hell would be worse. Did it kill people outside? Because in the beginning, they talk about two dead bodies that were found decapitated and limbless. Well, I mean, you hear about the calamity getting out and killing everyone in the media facility, but you don't hear about anybody else. Yeah. Like, it's just people that are that are linked to the house some way. Exactly. So, I mean, how big of a problem is this? Just nobody go to the fucking house. That's true. But, you know, the, the human spirit is curious. You know, what can I say? Oh, uh, yeah, I believe you. I, I see that. And, I mean, the ancient rituals, the weird shit, the the masks, it was all different. So, I was happy to see that because I'm tired of the same save the day because there's a war or save the day because there's aliens. This was ghosts. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> there we go. So, I liked it. I'll give it that. A story worked. One play it. I liked it. I gave it a 10. Okay respectable yeah i mean i just like the refreshing differentness of it 
Maybe if it was like done some other time or right next to another horror survival, it wouldn't have been as good. But who knows? Who cares? What's my score? I'm... Fuck you. <laughs> All right. Jesus. <laughs> but Scotchy. Yes, sir. Would you play it now? Did the story work for you? What score would you give it there, pal? Ooh, thanks for asking. Um, there are things I definitely like about it. Uh, I liked... First of all, I did a lot of goddamn research to just get the story <laughs> yeah. together because it's kind of all over the place. Yeah. So um, the the thing that really stood out for me when I was going through it and reading it is there was a lot of thought that went into it. There's a lot of good stuff in there, but it the way it was given to us was difficult. Like it, it was just too many notes that had way too important information. Yeah, okay. Like, the cutscenes you go through are just you being horrified. That's the other thing. Like, eventually, like, Miku keeps getting horrified every goddamn ghost she sees. You would think by the end of this game, she's like, oh, another fucking ghost. Okay, great. Yeah. I have a camera that kills him. Yeah. This might be tough, but I don't know. But, yeah, so she keeps getting horrified. But the uh, the other thing I didn't really like about it, they they keep going in the same rooms over and over because it takes place in the one location, which, you know, technically that's not the story. That's the game. Yeah. But I would argue it affects the story because I got very confused of where the hell I was in this building at all times. Yeah, I thought there were like three or four different shrines. Yeah. There's a, there's a couple. Was well, there a couple? The environments weren't very varied. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah, that that's. Too. Would I play it now? Probably not. Because I just feel like it's tank controls. It may not be. But there are definitely fixed cameras, which would be tough. Mm. Um, I like the idea of the fact that it's a survival horror that you use a camera rather than a gun. So I give it points for that. But still, no, I probably wouldn't play it at this point. Does the story work for me? Overall, I think it did. But in order to do that, you needed to really be into this game. And you needed to really read all the notes. And then you had to, like... In 2001, I guess, what, go to a fucking news group channel or a <laughs> blog somewhere, a game fact, until you figure out what the story was. And then if you get the whole picture, yeah, it's pretty good, and it's pretty well told. 2001, it probably came with a book that explained the story. Yeah, there's probably That's background a good point. in the fucking... Yeah. It's like all those Nintendo games that are like, wait, that's the story? It's like, yeah, it was in the book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh, the thing I threw away the first 10 minutes with the cardboard fucking box? Yeah. Did the story work for me? I'm going to say overall it did. And my score, I'm. I thought about this a lot, and part of me just wants to give it a great score because I did so much work. <laughs> <laughs> so this—that's not how it works, Papa Scotch. I know, I know, I know. But after I came off that and I thought about it more, I'm gonna go with a ten as well. Mm. I think there's enough interesting stuff in there. But if you're into like any Japanese horror films, or at least I've seen a bunch, mm -hmm. uh, they're all they're hitting all these beats too. They're hitting. The, pa the sins of the past are going to come back to get you. Um, you know, the past is haunting us. All like That's a theme in all of them. Yeah. Shit was crazier in the past. <laughs> yeah, shit was wild. They had all kinds of wild rituals, and no one's doing the rituals now because they're all fucking dead because the last one failed. But uh, yeah, so there it is. I give it a 10, which gives us a total score of Dr. Scientist. 27. Perfect. 27, which puts us two points below Metro 2033. Four points below Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal. And f eh, we'll go with two points above Devil May Cry. Okay. Mm. They're all in the same 10 point area. It doesn't matter, really. Yeah. Devil May Cry is almost exactly the same story, but with a shooty gun gun thing. But, shooty gun gun word? Yeah. But. Did that have a rope ritual? Exactly. Do you guys want me to go over the rope ritual again? No, yes. Start from the beginning. That was pretty neat. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. So let's let's wrap this shit up. Let's land this one. Let's do it. Let's. And with that, we're gonna get into our favorite segment of every week, which is Doctor Scientist Classling Rex and Fraser Lock and Awake Classling. Every week, we ask Doctor Scientist for a one hundred percent guaranteed classic wrestling finisher of the week. And he's never disappointed us. So this week, Dr. Scientist, what do you got? Oh, I got the most controversial wrestling move of all time. Oh, which snap. I, I didn't realize until 15 minutes before we started recording and I looked it up to see how to explain it. Mm -hmm. We're going to go with, uh, I should have thought about it, Chris Benoit's finishing move, the Crippler Crossface. 
the crippling crippler cross, cross face. crippler crippler cross face. Why is it? I'll, I'll explain it then afterwards. Okay. Uh, there's no description in the wiki, so I'll just describe it because it's not that hard. Perfect. The, uh, the person is on their stomach on the ground, mm-hmm. and you put one of their legs between your legs and hold it, and then you put both your hands across the guy's face and pull back. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Is that like a Boston crab? Sort of, but it's laying down, and it's just his face. Your hands are like right in his face. And pull yeah, you just like mushing his nose yeah. and his face. Yeah. It is also the first uh, finishing move to end a WrestleMania. In case Ooh, you wanted to know that, that's, that's, that's a nice little piece of, tri- piece of trivia. But uh, apparently, now this is real sad, and you might want to delete this later, Papa Scotch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you well know, Chris Benoit killed his wife and kid. Sure. I thought that was him. Okay. Yeah, and uh, he apparently, used that on her. apparently he used that on his kid to kill him. <laughs> Shut the hell That's what, That's what the urban legend is. I don't know exactly if that's 100% true, but uh, it's like... That sounds like bullshit. No it, they, said, they said they said like the... The cops found bruises on the kid, and they couldn't figure out why it was because the kid was like kind of passed out, strangled. And <laughs> Get the f- there's no fucking. That's, way. What, that's what I thought too. Because then when I was looking up to see if it was real in the couple of minutes before this, one's like, "Yeah, my friend said that he threw his wife out a window and then flying headbutted out." <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! But yeah, we'll go with know, the crippler did, cross face. He did lose his mind, but I find I think it'd be hard to do on a kid. Probably. Right. Let's not get All too right, deep not down. Kind of <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that's the problem with it. Yeah. <laughs> that is controversial. That's that. That's the crippler cross face. Yeah, don't use it in a street fight and or on your kids. Yeah. Jesus. All right. Well, that takes us to our favorite segment of every week, which is <sighs> chump slaps. Would you rather? Definitely much more exciting than the last one. Happier, at least. Ooh. Every week, we ask for chump slap. I would you rather question he has to explain himself is this this week, Sir Chumpslap. Would you rather get a face tattoo of something of your choosing or a tattoo in a discreet area chosen by someone else? What's the discreet area? I would say coverable by clothing. Coverable by Speedo? But like always covered or like if you wore a tank top, it'd be showing? Let's say it'll cover you... If you're wearing a normal length of shorts. But not a shirt. Well, not a shirt. It's a discreet area. I wouldn't get a tattoo at all, man. <laughs> but on your face? If it was whatever I wanted? Yes. I don't know what I'd want. Well, that's not the point. It, it, it would definitely have to, it would definitely have <laughs> to be visible. You get a cracking egg on the corner of your eye. Can I just get a dot? I was thinking like a little penis here with the tears coming down. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the one he picked. Yeah, that's... <laughs> it's funny you say that because that's the discreet one I would have given you on your butt. But... Uh, no, I'd probably get my own face tattoo. Why would I want somebody else to pick something? Is it on his face or just on his head? Oh, it's on his face. Like Mike Tyson style. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I'd go with my face tattoo because I don't want like... It's been long enough in my life I haven't gotten a tattoo. So I can't even pick something that I'd want on my body, but to you let somebody should, else do you it. You should uh, get like a little guy lawnmower above your eyebrow. <laughs> that's genius. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. <laughs> but uh, Dr. Scientist, if you had to give him a discreet, well, not give it to him. If you had to pick a discreet tattoo to put on Chomp Slap, what would it be? His bigger Let's penis on his penis. Go with <laughs> Carrot Top's head on his ass. That's a good one. Not bad. I thought you were going to say my face on his ass. That would have been also a good one. Because <laughs> someday that's going to be a weird conversation. <laughs> nah, no one's going to see it. But uh, all right. Well, let's say uh, someone had some really sweet ideas of what tattoos they would design for you. Where would they send those emails to, Sir Chump Slap? Send those to plottytime at gmail.com, and I will personally read and respond to each and every one of you. Perfect. And if they want to get to us faster on the socials with prospectus of the little lawnmower guy mowing down your eyebrow, <laughs> how would they do that, Dr. Scientist? At Plotty Time on Instagram, Twitter, and the PlayStation app. <laughs> Perfect. And if you want to get to us, uh, see a little, little logo in front of a waterfall, head on over to YouTube. Like and subscribe there. It really helps us out. In fact, you can like and subscribe anywhere. We'd love, we'd love to get your yeah. feedback. Like, subscribe, rate, review, binge. 
all those things. Tell us we suck. Go ahead. I dare you. Yeah, I don't give a shit. You don't have the balls. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, that does it for us, so get out there, play some games, don't trust Dr. Scientist, and we'll talk to you next time. Peace. See ya.